Combining the wealth of societal data in New San Haban may well be useful to those tracking terrorists and criminals, but it's also of great value to hackers and influence operators. As a result, increasing numbers of citizens around the world are using security tools to ensure that their data sets are kept separate, and many are resisting digital data collection altogether. These splitters, as they've come to be known, are often aligned with environmental activists and off-gridders. Because New San Haban is a smart city, it's effectively impossible to live there off-grid. And so there is a growing alternative community about 20 kilometers outside the city limits. Instant access to the world's knowledge has obviated the need to learn anything. Even education is now focused on processing rather than acquiring knowledge. As a result, objectively, people increasingly know less. The people who opt out, these so-called splitters, they slow down this great nation's technological advance. We have to ask, who's bankrolling that? Because that's exactly the kind of thing East San Hoban would love. In the capital, even the sidewalks are embedded with smart technology, so literally, your every step is being tracked and analyzed. It's clear to me that they are well-funded. By whom? The new Marxist International Forum. I think it's pretty obvious. With Corlo and the authorities spinning a web of lies, deceit, and misinformation, I'm here to ask the difficult questions. So do you want to know what's real and what's fake? Well, tune in. I'm Julia Sanchez. The truth, as always, remember to like and subscribe. And see you next time, Report 2030. Call Michael Kavanaugh. Traxos the Wise. <laughs> it's been a while since anyone's called me that. Yeah. World of Spellcraft, Netheroth Server, Fat Magnus's Tavern. <laughs> the good old days. Dragons, spells, loot boxes, and pay to win fire rings. It was a simpler life for sure. How are you, Julia? Uh, all things considered, I'm not bad. Kind of tired? Yeah. I'm sorry about your father. I hope he recovers soon. Yeah, thank you, I know he will. Uh, I hear Stephen's back Michael, and... <clears throat> you and I, we go way back. I value your activism. I really think you're doing important work. Oh, gee, thanks. But, but this is why I want to give you a chance to explain yourself before I go public. Have you been using your old gaming handle anywhere recently? <laughs> That's funny, uh, but no. Julia, I what is... I know, a new eShop account or a dating site or a pet loyalty program or I don't know. How about a dark web crypto Tumblr account? <laughs> Is this some part of the Corlo witch hunt you've been pulling off recently? So you admit it's connected to Corlo? What? Are you insane? <laughs> I mean, who could fail to spot how the tone of your show has changed recently, but wow. This is just crazy. I don't have to listen to this. You know, that username sent a very specific amount of crypto to the account of one Paul Hansen, who's now the prime suspect in the Access as a Service scandal? It's just a username. It proves nothing. But more to the point... That's true. Crypto tumblers usually like to keep their transactions anonymous, and they bounce coin around from place to place, usually through some pretty shady places. But at the top of the chain, there's just one wallet. Guess whose? That's impossible. You'd need to access every transaction log globally. What would you even use to get that kind of data? There is no way that this can be legit. You know, what if someone- Shut up, Michael. 
You knew what was being sold. You were a customer. Why would you cover for Corlo of all things? We, uh, we were convinced uh, that Corlo had been collecting user data without consent for years uh, in blatant disregard of the Kilishek Act of 2025. We tried everything. We notified everyone. No one cared. It was even getting worse, so... So what? Revenge? Please. Not revenge. We needed proof. But all the evidence was in Corlo's systems. So yeah, I bought access so I could find it and expose them. I know it wouldn't be admissible in court, but on social media, this would have dropped like a bomb. So what did you find? Nothing. Yes, we had access, but their databases are so vast that we were searching for weeks and we didn't even cover half. We couldn't find anything. And then the malfunction. I swear that's it. I know it looks bad, but this had nothing to do with us. You have to believe me. The opponents of the single identity still hold the slimmest of advantages in the polls. 52 against and 48% in favor. This could well end in the Supreme Court. In a 52-48 referendum, this will be unfinished business by a long way. Predictions are a mugs game. So, we know who was selling access. But we still have no idea whose credentials they were selling. So, we have to go back to checking for any suspicious lateral movement from every account. The police are also looking for the buyers, and if they can track them down, that should give us the information we need to find out who was in our network, for how long, what they were doing, etc., etc., and that should help us get to the bottom of things. Otherwise, it's tough. There's one system which is responsible for authorization, another which is responsible for monitoring network activity, and another one which is responsible for content tagging, and so on. Xenesis is still a standalone business unit from a technical perspective. None of these systems talk to each other. That's why we have to correlate all the data. How much data? Petabytes. Some system. How long? Without any help? Mm -hmm. Six weeks. Our second referendum, Identum 2, as they are calling it, is in just a few days, and it couldn't be any closer. With a single digital identity, we would be heading in the same direction as Isan Haban. We are not a crazy hippie commune. We are fighting for the fundamental human right to a private life, and we're not going to give up. Whatever it takes, we're going to keep on fighting. How's progress? I finished sorting all the data from the package. Is there anything that can help me figure all this out? I haven't read through every document. I've managed to categorize everything to make it easier for you to work on. <sighs> no, thanks. Yeah, you can uh, sort through file type, date modified, the usual. There's uh, even an MP4. Just one. MP4? Like video? Yes. Are those even in use anymore? Is that an old file? Oh no, fairly recent. Huh. Uh, from a few weeks back, actually. That is interesting. Let's have a look. We got it. It wasn't cheap, but we now have admin access to Corlo's backend. Oh, Traxos. Not so wise. Time to get what we want. 